What's up? How's it going? And no, I'm not starting in one hour. I'm starting right now. Also, let me add some background music in here so we're not having some awkward silences. What's up? How's it going? How's everybody doing? Welcome aboard. So yeah, in uh, this video, I'm totally planning on going over the Gorilla Tag tutorial that I talked about in the video on Wednesday and going through that, showing y'all how to set it up from scratch, trying to answer any of your questions that you have about, um, you know, issues you were having when you were trying to set it up or something. So um, we're going to walk through that a little bit and then we may even um, try to do a little more advanced um, features and stuff and try to add in like grabbing things and um, being able to you know move around by grabbing instead of just using friction and whatnot. So um, we'll play around with stuff. Oh good, I'm glad it worked it worked good for you. And you know, generally, I just like to do the live streams. So here we are doing a live stream. Um, I'm gonna try to do these every single week on Saturday at noon Eastern if um, I'm not traveling or something, so. Uh, always feel free to hang out. I want to, I'll probably end up starting to uh, vary these a little bit. So like at the moment, I'm just kind of covering what we talked about on Wednesday, but I'd like to in the future be able to start doing some more just like you know, gameplay like stuff, like let's play Pavlov. And then, you know, the first, you know, 10 people who want to jump in the um, lobby with me and play, um, I think that'd be super fun. Um, or even just live coding and whatnot. So um, yeah, just let me know what you guys are interested in um, and we, we can do that kind of thing. I'm starting up a Unity project and it takes forever. All right. Okay, yeah, so y'all's worked, cool, cool. So I was getting some messages on the Discord about it not working as well. Um, so I'm glad that um, you know, some people were having issues and then some people were not. So I'm glad it was working good for y'all. Cool. Ooh, also, if you have not heard yet, we are doing a game jam uh, at the end of this month, which I actually um, think I timed that rather poorly um, because it is actually going to be at the uh, same time as the global game jam. So it's itch.io slash jam VR jam jam. I'll pull it up on screen in a sec. Let me share. Vastly unprepared today. Share screen, there we go. So yeah, this is the uh, game jam. It is the uh, VR Jam Jam. So it's happening at the end of this month. And um, so it's going to be on the 28th through the 30th. Um, this is Eastern. And so the time should adjust for you. Um, and then we'll be able to, you know, hang out, play. I'm actually going to participate in this jam. Um, I don't want to see the weather going. Um, so, yeah. Come hang out, um, and I'm going to be live streaming a lot of this weekend, too, just so that um, we can, you know, all do the jam together, and if you can't participate, you can hang out with me and um, see, you know, how it works and whatnot. So we've got almost 50 people signed up so far, including me, um, so if you are joining, you get to compete against me, which would be fun. Um, we can see who, who makes the best, um, who makes the best game. And I don't even know the theme, I'm going to have, like, a... Um, a poll or something in the discord for people to vote on what they uh what the theme should be um kind of later probably later this week or next week any tips for managing to finish a project for a game jam deadline that is absolutely um the the main thing there is to cut down your like scope of whatever it is is to trim it down and be very very like you know I have this big idea, let's trim it down in half and, and do that idea. Or do like one like gameplay element. And then once you do that, then you can start to add more. But like have one thing that's fun to do and then you can start adding to that. So that they, yeah, that's what I recommend. Um, is the game gem for Oculus or Steam? It is either. So the 
Um, you can make it for either PC headsets, so the uh, Valve Index or the um, you know any of the HTC headsets or whatnot, or you can make it for the Oculus Quest, or you can do both. Um, ideally, you would do both. That way, everyone participating in the game jam could also play your game and rate it and whatnot. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a 72-hour game jam. The theme is going to be announced right when the jam starts. And then we're going to be rating on enjoyment. So how much did you actually like playing the game? The concept, so how interesting or unique is it? Um, we're going to be rating on presentation. So like, you know, how polished is it? And then the use of theme, which is obviously like how closely you stuck to the theme. Yeah, so yeah, if you're on Oculus, then that's perfect. And even if you are not participating in the game gym, you can absolutely play the games after they've been posted. And um, you are you won't be able to rate. You can only rate if you actually submitted a game. But if you um, are you know wanting to just play some free games and like try out some stuff, then feel free to hang out and play the games anyway. Um, so some of the rules are no... NSFW content. Um, you can submit more than one game if you really want to, but um, I <laughs> highly recommend just sticking to one. Um, you have to start the game when the game jam starts. You can't use a already half completed project. Um, you can make changes after, so like after the game jam ends, after the 72 hours, you're still totally allowed to make changes. You just have to keep your original version up. So you can't, um, so in itch, you can hide. Um, previous versions so you, you just can upload as many as you want and then just hide the previous versions um, so the idea is to keep the version that you posted before the game jam ended available but you can keep updating the other versions if you want as we go um, just so the people can play the game and rate it fairly for everybody else you're allowed to use any engine i use unity personally and um, if you want to follow along on any of the tutorials you'll have to use unity but um, you can use Godot or Unreal or whatever engine you're comfortable with. Um, and we are allowing any assets in this jam. So you can use whatever you want. Um, as long as you like legally have the right to use that asset, then you are totally allowed to add it to your game. Um, the spirit of the game jam is really to create a unique idea, not really manufacture, um, you know, the tools or um, whatnot. So you're totally allowed to use use things. Um, yes, if you are interested in coding for like game development, I uh, highly recommend Brackies. Brackies has a really good series um, on YouTube about how to you know, get into coding. So highly, highly recommend that. Let's see, you guys have any questions about the jam? Cool. All right, let's get into the project and uh, do some Gorilla Tag stuff. So, full disclosure, I actually, so I, I had the idea in my head to do the Gorilla Tag movement, but when I was looking around for um, the actual, like, you know, tech to, like, figure out how to do it and whatnot, I stumbled upon a uh, kind of a small YouTube channel, uh, Donian Tech. And he um, kind of hints at, he doesn't really walk you through the code of how to do it, but he hints at um, how he is using some VR um, climbing and whatnot and using PID controllers and Hooks Law and stuff, the stuff that I use in the video. And so um, absolutely giving him credit for um, helping me along in uh, creating this video. So if you are interested in some other interesting YouTubers who do some good tutorials, he is um, absolutely one to check out. So, um, Donian Tech. Um, and so he's got like procedural smoke, VR hands climbing, how to debug in VR, some buttons, um, and then some other stuff before he got into VR, it looks like. But yeah, give him a sub because he is very good. Good tutorials. Helped me um, when I got stuck at a point or two. Um, also, here is a brand new uh, Unity Hub. So we're in Unity Hub 3.0. So you'll see we have a dark mode now, which is super nice. And um, some things are kind of uh, moved around a little bit. So the installs page will look a little different. 
Um, you still have Unity Learn, um, and then you know your <laughs> the usual pages you never go to over here. But creating a project is a little bit different, or starting out a project. There's like a wizard you go through now instead of just hitting like go. Um, so you can either open a project, which this used to be called add, so this button's a little different, and then we can go to new project. And now you have your basic like 2D, 3D um, scenes, but then you, you know, you have your basic URP scene, but you also have the option to do a URP scene that is, um, oh, where'd it go? I definitely did this for the, uh, oh, that's because of Music 2020. So we're gonna, <laughs> I've done this like three times already, is um, start in the wrong version because, you know, just the way this Unity Hub is a little different. So make sure you swap the version over to whatever version you want to use. And then here we have a little more um, samples. So I was using the 3D URP scene. Um, I'm gonna start in 3D just because it spins up a little faster. So we'll do live gorilla tag that project. And then we'll wait three years for it to spin up. Oh yeah, I appreciate you. I'm just gonna read through the comments. I'm glad that I could help with some tutorials. The new Unity Hub is absolutely sexy. The, <laughs> the dark theme is great. Anything that has a dark theme, I'm absolutely all for. Like even if you're like making a UI in your game and you have the ability to swap it over to dark mode or even like swap back and forth, highly recommend doing that. Um, can I explain how to import Oculus hands? Um, I mean, that's pretty simple. All you have to do is grab a .fbx file or some other kind of um, .obj file of whatever the model is that you want to import, so a hand model. And then you literally just drag and drop into your um, Unity project and it'll spin up and um, you should be able to work with that. And then there's like a prefab box inside of the XR controller that you can drop a prefab of a hand in there and then it'll follow along your XR controller. What are my computer specs? So they are, um, I don't want to pin that. I want to show it. And I lost it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so my computer specs are, um, I have a Intel i7 that's like a nine something, um, like core 97K or 9700 or I don't know. Um, and then I have 16 gigs of RAM, which is relatively small. I need to upgrade that. And then um, let's see, I have a um, GeForce RTX 2070 graphics card um, that uh, has like eight gigs of RAM. So that's nice. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's it. I've got two, mo well, I have three monitors really. I have a teleprompter for my um, camera and stuff because I'm super fancy. And then I have a 26 inch here and then a um, 26 inch that's vertical over here. Let's see. Yeah, Unity Hub had the dark theme, but the, or Unity had the dark theme, but Unity Hub didn't. It's weird that they both came. Um, they came at different times. All right, I think it opened up. There we go. Where are you? Gorilla tag movement. Show me. There you are. There's too many screens. How do you reduce the motion sickness of VR? So, like, you will get used to... So, if you're talking about personally, you will get used to motion sickness over time. So, uh, the more you play VR, the more... Um, you, you know, get used to it and the more it doesn't really affect you, but you can make it better for your game by either upping the frame rate, um, adding in a teleportation option for users who are not really familiar with VR. Um, you could also, let's see, um, one important rule for VR is never take control of the player. Like don't move the player for them, like for like if you're doing a cutscene or something, don't lock the player in position, don't move the player without the player's input. Um, so it's just like, give the player full control. So like in Half-Life Alex, when you're going through a game, 
Um, and this is like what I want to do. I want to like play through some games and then when we're in a room, kind of talk about some of the d dev and design principles of like what the game is trying to accomplish instead of just, you know, doing a normal YouTuber playthrough. Like I want to walk through and be like, okay, in this part in Half-Life Alex, it's technically a cutscene. So it's like, you know, one of the characters is talking, but they don't lock you in place. They kind of just lock you in a room. So you can walk around the room, pick up things, move things, but the character is talking the whole time. So it's realistically a cutscene. Um, but like, and so it's like that kind of stuff where you want to give complete control to your player, make sure you have a high frame rate. Um, and then you sh that should help. And then like a teleportation option. Yeah, at this point, you don't get motion sickness. Like, it took me a while. Like, it felt like I got a hangover. Like, after I you did VR for, like, 30 minutes every single, like, time I played. But then after, like, a month or two, I don't remember how long it was, it, like, finally it just started to go away. And then if you don't play VR for a long time, you come back into it, you'll get that same feeling again. So, you got to keep up with it. Oh, yeah, the uh, cutscenes in Resident Evil are, like, rooms with screens on them. Um, yeah, it's a little, I don't like it when VR games have like the screen type cutscenes. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right, let's, uh, go ahead and add VR to this project. So I'm going to go to project settings, XR plugin management, and then click on install. You'll see me doing it live. So I actually have to wait for things to install. Um, which is <laughs> something you guys get with a little movie magic in, um, you know, the, the tutorials and whatnot. So I'm going to install OpenXR. I'm not really going to mess with Android stuff for this tutorial because it's just extra packages I have to download. Also, I don't think I've started up my headset today. Make sure I'm in, uh, in link mode here. Um, also, yes, I do want to restart my project. Tracking lost. That's rude. What? I definitely have tracking. Restart. My headset's been um, particularly finicky lately. Like, it'll swap over. It'll, like, automatically black out and be, like, a black screen. Um, sometimes, like, and, like, I'll be in play mode. And I could see my player moving around if I like kind of peek the headset a little bit, but there'll be a black screen in here, which is really annoying. Ooh, it's back. Um, and then just now I would like lose tracking sometimes. So I don't know what's up with that. All right. Come on, work for me. Otherwise it's gonna be a really awkward tutorial. There we go. Much better. Confirm my guardian. Swap into link mode. And almost. We're waiting. We've got three dots. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Okay. Let's continue this setup. So we're gonna drop over into Open XR, and then on the interaction profiles, I'm gonna add the Oculus Touch or. Valve Index because I misclicked and Oculus Touch and then I'm going to swap over to multi-pass render mode and then that should be settings set up for now we'll come back to it in a minute um, but next we want to go to window package manager wait for that to load up and then we want to manually add the XR interaction toolkit so type in com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit so we manually that up, add a little of words, manually add that. Um, let's see, in modded Beat Saber, there's a mod called Replay that lets you watch replays, record them. You watch the replay on a fixed camera view, which is super, oh yeah, that's weird. Like they should let you, um, like if you played Population um, 1, and if you go into spectator mode, they let you kind of like move around like you're, a, you know, just a floating camera. Um, and that's pretty cool. Makes the world look really small. Um, all right, so there's recently been an update. So we're in 2.0 for the XR Direction Toolkit. So that's why this pop-up shows up. It basically just says, 
we've upgraded from 1.0 to 2.0, so you might break things if you do this upgrade. So, but since we have a new project, we're fine. Why don't you use Airlink? I don't use Airlink because it times out after a certain amount of time. And so I'll be coding, um, making like VR stuff for like, several hours and if i'm like coding for a little while for like an hour or two before i like jump in and test then my air link will have timed out and i'll need to go back in and turn it back on and do all that kind of stuff but the um link mode with the uh the actual cord will actually um not time out it, it like takes a lot longer to time out so that's that's the reason i don't use link mode also link mode is a little bit laggier too um like you know you have a you know, eight times more data going through here instead of wirelessly um so like basically you think of it like the uh usb cable has eight um cables that are like all plugged in i forget what it, how many it is and then so you're moving like eight times more data um than you know just wirelessly since it's like one kind of input Oh, so it's not actually fixed. You can move it around. Oh, it's fixed, so it's not shaky. That's, yeah. Oh, I've never done Pavlov's, um... Oh, yeah, 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 I have. I've done Pav... You can... What do you mean you can't zoom? You just get close to people. Like, there's not really, like, a zoom feature. You just kind of, like, fly in and you're, like, really close to people. Um, you don't know about Airlink, but you will learn about it. Yeah, Airlink is a, is a cool thing if you don't have like this super long like um, cable for the Oculus. Like you have to buy like this is like a thirty for thirty foot cable, um, and you don't have to buy Oculus's version. Oculus's version is like eighty ninety bucks, um, so I wouldn't buy that one. Um, but if you don't have that, you can use the link mode to like just write out of the box. Um, zoom in with the grips. Huh. Okay. I have not tried that. I just use the thumbsticks. We'll have to play, we'll have to play population one. Um, and then, or not population one. We'll have to play population one, but we'll also have to play Pavlov and uh, you guys show me what you're talking about. All right, XR Interaction Toolkit, we need to download the sample, so default input actions. And then that'll give us some default input actions, which we need to go and just add each of these presets. Do our project, that's five total. And so when you download this, you get all of the pre-built-in actions like select, um, which is your grip button, activate is set to the trigger. So you can just expand these. And if you wanna change it, so like if you wanna change what your teleport um, buttons are, you can just go in here and swap whatever controls you have to something else. And then we go back into settings and then over in preset manager, we just need to define the left and right hand controllers. So right and left. So just type that in, in the filter so that unity recognizes it. I don't know why this isn't automatic, but whatever. Um, does your hands video still work? I would, I have not, honestly, there's people like ask me questions about my YouTube videos that I did like a year ago. And I'm like, honestly, you probably know more about it than I do at this point. Um, I have absolutely gone through and used my videos to relearn something because I forgot about it. So I have not watched my hands video in a long time. So, um, would, uh, <laughs> would I would probably recommend just going with this video as the updated like hands video because it uses PID controllers which is a little more accurate. I think the other one used like a weird version of PID controllers. So this this one's a lot more updated and better. What's up Peter? And Rowie. Rowie? Rowie? I'm terrible at pronunciation. I am uh very southern. So my, uh, I, I am so bad at accents. I, I can't do any accents or whatever, um, which makes me really bad at pronouncing people's names. <laughs> so uh, the XR, XR Interaction Toolkit doesn't pop up for you. Uh, what you need to go do is go to Window, Package Manager. And then, so here it's showing up for me, but it was not earlier. So you need to hit this plus icon and then go down to Add Package from Git URL. 
and then type in com.unity.xr.interaction.toolkit. So type that in right there and that'll manually download the interaction toolkit even if you can't see it. Good morning, Bright. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to, uh, this is going to be way over advanced uh, topic of the class that I'm teaching on Monday. Um, if you don't know, I teach for a company called XR Terra, um, like a more like boot camp kind of, we go through a whole multiplayer project and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a, a, maybe a little more advanced than I teach on, uh, on Monday. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Just copy and paste that. All right, so now all we need to do is add a XR origin. So I'm gonna right click in the hierarchy, go to XR and then XR origin and make sure you click the action based one. So that'll give you um, the hands and the interaction manager. And on the interaction manager, we need to add an input action manager and then add in the XRI default input actions. And I'm going a little fast because I covered all this in the tutorials, so. Um, I'm kind of bouncing back between teaching and um, answering y'all's questions. And this this type of content is more for answering y'all's questions. So just if you have any questions about setup or um, anything, just drop them into the chat. All right, so we have our origin. Um, make sure that's centered. Yep. And then I'm going to add a plane. This will be the ground. And then we also want to... We'll come back to that. Yeah, I'll come back. Um, so let's make some hands and actually, you know, move around with some physics hands and whatnot. So we want to grab our, go back to assets all the way up here. And I'm going to create a scripts folder. So right click folder scripts. And then inside of the scripts folder, we're going to add a new C sharp script called physics hand. and then open up my editor. Um, so this is what I'm using here is called Writer, JetBrains Writer. And it may have a little bit different colors for you if you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, but all the code should be exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> what if you have an options menu in your game to change the controls? How can you change the controls that are in the menu using scripts, or do you have to use a different method? No, you can absolutely um, do that. So what I usually do um, to change the, and I think I may have, yeah, I think I did this on the last live stream, um, review, review, whatever. Um, if you check like kind of later in the last live stream, I actually show you how to do that. Um, swap movement between teleportation and continuous move by just clicking your thumbstick. Um, and which you could also translate to clicking a button on a UI menu or whatever. So yeah, check that one out. You don't have a menu option for the controller. I'm not quite sure what that means. Anyway. So back into the code. I hate how it opens up on a different screen. All right, so I'm going to clean this up. Delete a couple of using statements. Um, delete the comments here and then so we're using a pid controller which is really just some complicated math um so let me let me wiki pid controller um here we go wikipedia so a pid controller is proportional integral derivative which is just really complex math um so like just this formula here that we convert into code um, and it basically just tracks our, um, it, it, it's really complicated formula for um, how quickly can I move my physics object to a point um, without it kind of overshooting and doing a rubber band type thing. Um, so there's like an animation here. So like, here you go. So depending on what your um, values are, it'll like rubber band a couple times and then stable out or it'll like rubber band once or it'll do like a smooth 
um, catch up to the particular point. So it's like really how fast it's like a dance between how fast you want it to move to your spot. So like this is going to be our controller and then this is going to be the physics hand. And we want the physics hand always tracking the controller's position like this. But we don't want if we move our hand really fast, the physics hand to go like back and forth like that, because that's, you know, a little weird. Um, yeah, Alexander, I'm absolutely actually planning on doing like a whole full length long tutorial about how to make, um, you know, a game from absolutely starting to finishing and being able to release it on itch or, um, the Oculus store or steam or, um, you know, the app lab or whatever. So I will definitely be doing that. Um, but yeah, this is a PID controller. You can look into it a little more. And if you actually know about math things, um, then um yeah but we're i think we're actually only using the derivative and the proportional um equations for this particular one i don't really know much about it but i know um that it works pretty well so and it's like something that's getting a lot more standardized a lot more people are using this kind of controller for physics hand especially with like vr type things um so to start out with um we need to do a couple things. So we're, since it's all gonna be physics based, we're gonna change this update to a fixed update. So now instead of doing every frame, we're doing a fixed interval. Um, so I would recommend doing all of your physics kind of calculations inside of a fixed update. And then um, we want to do a couple things. So a PID movement, this will be just the position. And then we need to do the PID rotation. And that's obviously going to be the rotation. Um, so I'm going to create the uh, both of these. So void PID movement. Goodness, typing was really hard today. Wow, that was that was super difficult. Um, and then void PID rotation. Uh, it works for unity and even auto completes unity stuff yes um writer it's super nice i'm trying not to do the auto completion stuff so i can actually show you what, what i'm typing in um, but writer is super super nice like i can even start unity from in here by clicking this button and it'll start unity in play mode um, so writer is very nice um so this requires some complicated code that I'm absolutely just going to copy and paste unashamedly. Um, so here is the formula for the movement. So you have um, P, so this is your P, and then you have D. Um, so th those are the P and D of PID. Um, and basically the values we get to play with are frequency, dampening, and then we have a target to follow. And then we adjust the, uh, and then we're calculating in the player's rigid body and the um, controller's rigid body to calculate how much force we need to add. Um, so it's a very complicated formula that basically just spits out a force for like, okay, for this particular frame, how much force are we going to add? Um, particularly acceleration, how much acceleration are we going to add to our physics hand so that we can, you know, get our physics hand to our controller um, you know, quickly, but not do the rubber band. So we need to create um, some of these variables. So I'm going to go up here to the top and say we need a serialized field. Um, and serialized field just lets me keep it at, at private, but also shows the value to me in the inspector. Um, so this is going to be a float and it's going to be a frequency. And the frequency, the number that I've um, kind of been working with is 50. And then I'm going to press control D, which will duplicate that line and then change frequency to damping and then change the damping value to one. Um, so that's our frequency and damping value. And now we need a target. So this is basically just the, uh, the hand that we're following. So serialized field, and that's going to be a transform. So transform target. And we'll have to set that in the inspector. And then we need a player rigid body. So serialized field, rigid body. 
and that's going to be can't talk and type at the same time. Play your rigid body, um, which is basically like the parent object, like how much um, is the parent object moving. And so we're going to kind of add that to our calculations as well. And then we also need the very bottom, just a private rigid body. And I'll usually add this um, underscore in front of things that are private and can't be changed anywhere except for this class. So like these are lowercase um, because they're private variables, but they don't have an underscore because you can change them from Unity, from the Unity inspector. So um, that's kind of like how I name things different. Um, you know, shops will have different ways of naming type naming things. <clears throat> Uh, you want to get into watching me and playing games with me, and you don't know the schedule for that. Well, I am planning on doing um, uh, live streams every weekend. So if you want to start to play games and hang out, um, hang out here with me on uh, Saturdays. Usually around noon Eastern is when I try to live stream, and it'll 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 vary a little bit, but usually Saturdays, Saturday early afternoon for the uh, Eastern time zone folks, and. Uh, I think pretty soon we'll start like playing games and stuff. And if you're in the Discord, there is a um, particular role you can get where I'll um, ping you if you're interested in playing games and we can all, you know, jump in a game together. So absolutely join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. If you have not joined the Discord already, it is um, a very fun place to hang out. All right, so now we have a force. We have the target that we're tracking and we have the rigid bodies that we need. Um, well, we actually need to set up the rigid body in the start. So rigid body is going to be equal to a get component rigid body. That'll automatically set that so we don't need to set it in the inspector. And then that this whole formula will spit out a force for us. And then we just apply that force to the physics hands rigid body. So rigid body dot add force force. And it's going to be an acceleration force. Um, so let's, we could actually jump in and try just the movement there. Um, so let's create a new, so back in Unity, I'm going to create a new empty object. And this is just going to be a physics um, XR origin. And under that, we're going to add a cube, which is going to be a hand, left. And then on the left hand, we're going to... Kind of scale it down a little bit. So let's do something like um, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Um, but I think the X value we're gonna make really small, 0 0.01. Yeah, there we go. And then I'll actually bring up this whole thing a little bit. So we're just gonna have little squares for hands. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to make them yellow, so it's actually cheese. Um, materials, create a new material. And material, and we'll make it yellow. Oh, come on. You won't let me add material. What is happening? There we go. Couldn't couldn't select it correctly. I think it was trying to add it to like the camera or something. But now we have some cheese. Um, all right. So on our hand, we have a box collider, which is, you know, what we want for the physics. And then we also need a rigid body. And for the mass, we're going to increase the mass a little bit just so we um, have a little a little bit more force. It feels a little better. And then we want to. Uh, not use gravity because we don't really need that calculation. Um, and then interpolate is on and collision detection is continuous dynamic because this is going to be moving quickly and, you know, lots of physics calculations. And now we're just going to, oh, and then we need to add physics hands too. So physics hand script here. And then the target is going to be our left hand controller. And the rigid body is a rigid body that goes on the player. So we actually need to add a rigid body here. So I'm on the XR origin now. 
bridge your body here and same thing interpolate and continuous dynamic and then on the main camera is where i'm going to add the collider so capsule collider and i'm going to scale the radius down to like 0.25 and the height to um 0.7 and then the y value is going to be negative 0.35 so negative half of the value so now the uh, collider is going to be exactly you know, on the top of the head why would i use the uh cube shapes for hands uh because Oh, it gives you a little more direction of like where you're pointing your hands. So it kind of shows and like, you know, it's kind of what your hand looks like a little bit. If you like flatten your hand out, there we go. Now we have our, our little cubes should look like that. Um, spheres is like this, I guess. You just have little balls for hands. You're going to play Gorilla Tag while we're while watching this. Would the Voodoo Link Cable work with Unity? Um, I think as long as it's a USB uh, 2.0 or above, so it has a USB 2.0 at least on one end and then the uh, USB-C on this end, so it'll plug into the slot, should work, because um, um, the uh, Oculus just recent, not, not just recently, but originally they started out with their proprietary cable and then people complained, so they made it so you could use, um, you know, any USB 3.0 cable and then they downgraded it so now you can use any USB 2.0 cable and above. Um, actually maybe. I'll drop this down to negative point two. There we go. So we have capsule collider and a rigid body on our XR origin. And I'm gonna bring the whole XR origin up just so the capsule collider is totally above the ground so we don't like clip through it and get launched down. And then on the Physics XR origin, we have a left hand, which has a box collider rigid body, and the physics hand, which we get to grab the player rigid body now and connect. And then I'm just gonna click on left hand and press Control B to duplicate it and rename it to hand right. And then instead of tracking the left hand, we wanna track the right hand controller. And we should have movement set up. So I'm going to make sure that this looks good. Plays maximized. And then let's test um, just the position. So we're not testing the um, rotation just yet. So let's see, oh goodness. That's nauseating. So, what did I miss? First off, we need to lock the XR Origins uh, rotation because that's um, like causing the ro rotating, which is annoying. And then um, we need to adjust some layers. So the XR Origins collider needs to be on a, another layer. So we're gonna create a player layer. And then the, so the XR Origins collider is gonna be on a player layer. And then both the left hand and the right hand, so I selected both of them by pressing control and clicking the other one, are also going to be on the player layer. And then in settings, so edit, project settings, and physics, we want to uncheck the player colliding with player. So now uh, if we're touching the like our heads collider with our hands, it's not just going to like you know try to launch us to the side or up or whatever. So if you if you ever find yourself flying through the air randomly, that's usually what's happening is you're colliding with a um, another collider and it's trying to manage that and just throwing you off into the world. Do I ever do photogrammetry for my VR? I have not, I've looked into it, it looks super cool. But the problem with that is any, or any hyper-realistic kind of assets that you're trying to add to your VR project, like you, you have to treat VR like it's a, mobile game like a very um low end low end processor type of game like the graphics have to be relatively simple unless um you know you render a very small amount like so like half-life alex like you were never in a large space because you know for it to just if for it to render that money many that like high fidelity in that even for a pc 
VR game, it was um, my PC was um, hogging a little bit, trying to render Half Life Alex sometimes. All right, let's try this again. Saved. So I basically just made a new layer and had it so I wouldn't collide with that layer. There we go. And so now our hands are tracking correctly, but you'll see rotation doesn't work yet. So I'm moving around and they move pretty well with me. You see, there's like a little bit of a delay and you can see, you know, the center point of the ray cast and how it kind of tracks with a little bit of a lag, but it's not really, not too bad. So now let's add in rotation. Right now it just kind of freely rotates, um, but we want to add in rotation now. And the rotation formula is very similar to the movement formula, except it's adding in a little bit of quaternion math. And so just like before, I'm gonna copy and paste. So there we go. Give you a second to look at it. Also, it is, um, I, I show you and you can pause, or you can pause this if you want, if you wanna copy it down. Um, but for this, all we're gonna do is, um, have, we had the frequency and dampening for the movement. We're just doing the same thing, but it's a rotation frequency and a rotation dampening. So we'll go up here and I'll actually just do comma and rot. Um, actually, I'll do comma here and rot frequency. And we're gonna make that one 100. And then after damping, rot damping. I would say dampening, Damp damping, dampening. I'm not quite sure which one of those is right. Um, and then this one is going to be a little bit less, so we're going to equal 1.9 F. Do that. Go down. Um, no errors anymore. And then we, this formula spits out a torque because it's angles now instead of vectors. Um, so it's quaternions. Um, and we want to do the same thing. So rigidbody.addTorque, and it's gonna to be torque, and it's an acceleration force. So basically all we're doing is implementing the PID formula and adding it to our hands. There we go, we shouldn't have to change anything in our Unity project. And hit go. Let's see if our hands track <clears throat> the uh, rotation specifically. There we go. Oh, and so it's a little slow. So if I, you can see it, if I turn my hand fast, it doesn't really catch up very well. It's a, it's a slow, it, it tracks pretty well, but it's a slow turn. And the way we fix that is all we have to do is up the uh, maximum angular momentum. So in our code again, start after we grab the rigid body, we're just going to take the rigid body's max angular velocity and set that equal to a float dot positive infinity. So now there's no maximum to how quickly we can turn our hand. So jump back into unity. Let that catch up and then hit play. And now we should be able to rotate our hands pretty quickly. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see much, much faster and it tracks very well. So like you'll see the hand still has a slight delay but that's kind of necessary unless you wanna have, so like that avoids any, um, so you see there's no wobbling or anything. So I could up the damping a little bit and it would kind of like overshoot, um, but like, yeah, the faster you move your hand, the farther away it gets. But with the uh, limitations of our technology, this is um, how it goes. Okay, but if I push against the ground, I didn't demo this, but it's not going to work. If I push against the ground, nothing happens. Um, like the hands, so you track correctly, but nothing really happens. And I can like flip around a cube and whatnot. So if we just add in a, uh, let's add in a cube make it like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Set it um, over here. I'll just reset it. Oh, 
we'll set it up right there and then we'll add a rigid body to this continuous dynamic and interpolates um, we'll actually be able to play with the cube oh it's all the way over there and it's the wrong it's not a good color let's make a gray kind of color for the ground just so we can see a little better drop that a little bit there we go a little darker leave that and then i'm gonna i'm gonna add movement in right now just for like testing and stuff so i'm gonna right click xr locomotion system and then i'm just going to swap out the uh, we can reset that and i'm going to swap out the teleportation so i'm going to remove that one and add in continuous move action based and then make sure snap turn is only being used on the right controller and continuous moves only been used on the left controller so change the color of some things and uh added movement in and now I can move up to the cube. Um, and so I can grab this. So this is like all physics stuff. So I can, you know, move it around. If I move my hand too fast, it falls off. And then I can like kind of juggle it back and forth. And I can throw it if I want. So all physics stuff, it all works. Um, and I can't push through the ground. So if I push all the way down and then I keep going, keep going. The uh, cheese stays, you know, colliding with things. It doesn't go through it. So we have physics hands. This is an updated, like, kind of physics hands type thing. If you have watched my previous video, this is a much better video for that. Um, so let's add in um, Hooke's Law, which is another mathematical formula. Let's see. Hooke's Law is basically just springs. So um, the math equation for this is F is equal to K times X, which is the distance the spring has been pushed or pulled multiplied by a um, mass. So we use this law to help us push off. And so basically the further we separate our physics hand from our controller, the more spring tension there's going to be and the ability for us to kind of launch ourselves and move ourselves around and whatnot. So you once made a game, but because both my hands and my body had collisions, when you put your hands under your body, you flew up in the sky. So yes, um, and it's not the rigid bodies that need, a, need to be on different layers. It is the colliders. So you see, I have my um, XR Origin with the rigid body has a default layer, but the main camera, which has the capsule collider, is using a player layer. And so we uh, have disabled in our physics settings. So if we go up to edit, project settings, physics, let's see all the way down here, the player matrices, or the, uh, this is the physics interactions matrices. So like player is disabled with player. Um, and so this main camera capsule collider layer of player does not interact with the left hand or the right hand. <laughs> My wife's filming me, being filmed, doing a live stream. Very meta. Meta. Um, so the left hand and the right hand also have box colliders and uh, are, you know, basic. So the, this layer does not interact with itself. So everything you put on the player layer is not going to touch each itself. And so, like, yeah, that, that, and that's why you go through flying off, is because of that reason. Where were we? Oh, okay, so we're gonna add Hooke's Law. So in our script here, so we have PID movement and rotation. We're not gonna mess with those anymore. Underneath that, we're going to add Hooke's Law. Spelled with an E. And then here's where my IntelliSense, or my, uh, I really like my IDE, is I can press Alt and Enter, and it'll pop up a little like IntelliSense thing and say, okay, do you want to create a method? And I can just hit enter and it creates it for me. So void hooks law, and then it adds in this exception, which I don't need, so I can delete it. Um, 
but yeah, it's super handy for that kind of stuff. And so when you're moving fast and I'm not like explaining things to a camera, I can, you know, usually make methods pretty quick and add stuff and whatnot. So um, that's how I do things fast. So this is again, JetBrains writer, if you are interested in getting it. Um, so Hook's Law is a little bit more simple of a formula. Yes, if you're using Visual Studio, the instead of Alt Enter, it'll be Control Period, which will pop up that IntelliSense. Um, which actually, I think it works in Visual. Yeah, it works here too. Both hotkeys. Alt Enter is the JetBrain hotkey, and uh, Control Period is the um, other hotkey. And if you, if I never mention a hotkey, I have a little uh, thing down here that shows, you know, when I do something with a hotkey it'll show it down here just just in case you miss it or i don't explain it correctly all right so hook's law is a little it's a it's a simple um formula relatively simple compared to pid um we're using a vector three to get the displacement from resting so that's one part of the spring formula how how compressed or expanded is the spring and that's basically just the transform dot position minus the target dot position so just the distance between the two and then we get a force so vector three force is going to be equal to the displacement from resting multiplied by um, a climb force and the climb force is just a constant that we can bump up or bump down um, to make the climbing you know, if we push down, how far is it going to launch us, um, essentially, is what this does. So I'm going to you know, use my hotkeys again, Alt-Enter, or Control-Period, if you're a Visual Studio. And then I can create other, create serialized Unity Climb Force field. And so up here at the top, it'll create this for me. I'm going to press Alt-Down to kind of reorganize some of these. Um, so up here, I'm going to make a header. This is going to be PID stuff. And then we'll have a space. This is just like a little bit of organization inside of the inspector. And then another header. And this is going to be um, Hook's Law. We have Climb Force. And uh, all the private variables need to be below the space and header for some reason. It doesn't recognize that kind of stuff. Um, yes. So the Gorilla Tag code, the movement code, is open source for people to use. Um, I think I linked it down below. I, I'm pretty sure that's the right one. If it's not the right one, please let me know. I found it online, and I think that is the correct one. And it uses, it's like different, it's totally different from what we're using here, um, as far as I could tell. Um, or it's quite different. So you won't be able to mix and match both of them. You have to use one or the other, probably. Is there a movement code that is hidden that would make the game not feel like Gorilla Tag? Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think all of the movement is just one script and it's open source. Um, so you could use, you know, you could use this one if you want, or you could use the actual Gorilla Tag that's uh, linked down in the description. All right, so we have climb force, and down here, where were we? Collapse both of those. We, we're using Hook's law. Um, so this force is going to be added on one end, but then we also need to add a drag force, and this is where um, Donian really helped me. So if you're just joining us, there was a YouTuber um, called Donian. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Again. Terrible pronunciations. There he is. Um, so he's another emerging VR YouTuber who's really helpful and good at stuff. Um, and he is, has done punching and procedural smoke. And so he has some stuff about where he just kind of talks about his gripes with VR climbing um, and some of the ways he would like to make it better. And so... Um, here is where I learned how to add a drag force or the necessity to add a drag force here. Um, and that like kind of prevents that weird like bone works shake, you know, if you've ever been climbing in bone works and it's just like very wobbly. So you have a drag, but then the drag is based off of 
um, which is very a very clever idea is to base the drag off of how much um, motion you have. Um, so we're going to do a float drag. So it's just gonna be a float variable. And we're just gonna send that to a method, so get drag. And I'm gonna create that method, alt enter, create method or control period. Oops. And we want it. So the get drag is basically just gonna be a vector three of hand velocity. Oh, and velocity. That's gonna be equal to the target dot local position minus the previous position. I'm using a reference because I don't want to mess y'all up. And that's going to be divided by time dot fix delta time. Fix delta time. If you just typed in fix time here, it would automatically convert it to you to over to fix delta time because we're doing all of this operation inside of fix update. Um, so Unity is smart enough to be able to tell the difference. And then we're going to grab a, do a little bit of math. Drag is going to be equal to the inverse. So one over and velocity magnitude. And then to avoid dividing by zero at any point, we're going to add a small number like 0.1. So basically we're just taking the inverse. So the faster we move, the less drag, more we move, more drag. And that's this one over magnitude. And then we could do math.clamp. Clamp. There we go. Um, and we want to clamp the drag value between a one value, so one F, and um, like a small number like 0 0.003. Then we'll set this clamp to drag. So all clamp does is just, you know, make sure that drag doesn't get out of this range of one to, you know, 0 0.03. And then we're gonna reset the previous position equal to transform.position and then return drag. I think in this tutorial, I manually did clamp because I couldn't get my IntelliSense to figure out that clamp was actually a recognized word and so it was just throwing me errors, which was quite annoying, but you know, you could do it manually too. All right, one more thing, let's create previous position. So up here, um, using a vector three, previous, and then in the start previous position can just be the transform. So also in the start, we want to automatically teleport the physics hands to our actual hands. We don't want it to have to like, you know, fly through some, you know, like box or something that if, if I start here and my, um, you know, physics rig starts over here, it'll be a weird, like quickly, like move to me. So I just want to teleport my physics rig directly onto, um, you know, wherever I am. So we want to do the, uh, Transform dot position is going to be equal to the target position, and then the transform rotation is going to be equal to target rotation. Right at the beginning, so we use teleportation once, and then we use physics for the rest. Does Unity not do order of operations for equations? Don't you need to do the addition in parentheses in order to avoid dividing by zero? That is a good point. We'll do that. catch you're confused i would think boneworks would have the best physics boneworks has good physics until we get to climbing and that's actually something um that so if you go watch this video here um here i'll link it in the uh in the chat But it, um, yeah, if you go watch this video, he breaks down the difference between um, Boneworks' climbing and then Half-Life Alex's climbing 
and how you can get better um it's like bone works is kind of like under damped so like any like little movement you make is very like wobbly um whereas half-life alex um you know doesn't let you move very quickly so it's kind of like a give and take kind of thing um but yeah bone works is, has really good physics except it's like kind of rubber bandy a little bit so it kind of like they don't have this drag so basically if bone works added this drag method it would be great um but yeah it gets a little bit of a little wobbly sometimes all right so i know that was a lot of code um but we have one more thing in hook's law so basically we just need to apply this so um, we're going to take the player's rigid body. So we're taking the spring force that we got from Hooksaw, and now we're adding it to our player's rigid body, um, which will move our entire player. Um, so we're going to add a force. We're going to add the um, you know the normal force first. That's going to be a acceleration force, and then we're going to add another force, and that's going to be the drag force. But since drag is a float, we'll need to convert that over to a vector three. So we're just going to take the drag force, multiply it by the opposite of the player rigid body velocity, and then multiply that by a climb drag. Basically, like we had with a climb force, we can, you know, do a constant up and down, and then this is also going to be an acceleration force mode. So I'm going to use hotkeys to create a serialized field, and then move that up. And then climb force is going to be equal to um, let's see, what do we have it set up? I had it set at like a thousand. I'll drop it back to like 500. And then climb drag, I'll set to half, to 250. And we'll see how that does. We can bump that up and down if we want. Um, so that's, uh, that's the whole thing. So I'll, I'll go over it. I'll like scroll through it just so you can like kind of pause and take notes and whatever. So all the variables, we have PID stuff and hooks law stuff and then some private things. Um, when we start, we're teleporting our physics hands to our controllers, and then we're grabbing the rigid body, setting the max angular velocity of our rigid body to positive infinity so we can twist our hands really fast. And then we are using previous position later to get the velocity of our hand. Um, so our, the velocity of our hand from last frame. Um, so we're going to use that. And then in our fixed update, we have PID movement, PID rotation, and hooks law, and we'll, go, we'll come back and there's there's one issue with all this code that I'll come back and show you. Um, Hooks law, basically just using the force from a spring, like how far are we pressing against something, and then get drag, and then PID movement, which kind of goes off the screen a little bit. There we go, and then PID rotation. Perfect. So let's try this. We shouldn't have to do anything because all we did was do code changes. So inside of here, um, yep. Oh, climb force is zero because we came in here earlier before we defined climb force. So I'm just gonna set it to 500. Save our scene. Um, and then we hit play and we'll see what happens. And I'll show you some of the issues we have. There we go. All right, so we can move forward. When we push off of, oh, we're having an issue pushing off of something. All right, so our, our thing still works, um, but when we move around, we're not getting, oh, I'm getting some kind of issue. Let's let's do some live debugging. This is the, the one issue with uh, not pre-recording stuff is that run into issues like this where oh here we go one cannot be greater than 0 0.03 oh maybe the parentheses thing threw it off okay so we're getting an issue here hold on oh okay i, I did clamp backwards this needs to be minimum and maximum that was my issue. So it was clamping everything incorrectly, and that's that was our issue. Having your console open is very nice because it'll uh, pinpoint you exactly to the issue. So if you click on the error, 
and it'll tell you the exact line of code that it's having issues with. So, um, 49, which was this one right here. So, yep, line 49, the clamp, and so we swapped these over. So it's small number, big number. I had it backwards. And let's try this. There we go. So now when I, uh, you can kind of look at the cube here, when I bounce off, I kind of push off, but also, um, here's the issue I was having is I can kind of like throw myself and like just by moving my hand, we kind of move backwards and forwards, which is really annoying. Ooh, and then when I try any kind of actual movement, um, we just get launched. So we need to fix that issue. And it's really like we only want to push off something if we're touching something. That makes sense, right? Um, and right now the, uh, the spring kind of hooks law is pushing off of itself, basically. Um, so like any dit, like if you move your hand fast, there'll be a little bit of separation. And so that's that spring that's kind of throwing you back and forth. So we need to basically just do a check and say, if we, are we colliding with anything? And then if we are, then we can, um, you know, actually use hooks law. So we're just going to do a bool is colliding. And then bools always start out as false. And then instead of uh, always calculating Hooke's Law, we're only going to calculate Hooke's Law if we are colliding. Is colliding. And then the way we set colliding is... I'll uh, collapse all of these here. Um, so the way we set colliding is we're going to do void on collision enter. And we're going to set is colliding equal to true. Nope, not texture. True. Bad thing about IntelliSense is sometimes I'll be typing too fast, I'll misspell something and hit tab and it'll autocomplete the wrong thing. Um, all right, and then on collision exit. No, is colliding, is false. Now, if we jump back into code, or jump back into Unity. Hit play. We should only move around when we're touching stuff. So I can move my hands as fast as I want now, but it only bounces when I push off the ground, which is exactly what we want. So I can even push off of this cube here, <laughs> except the physics like allow me to go through it a little bit, but here we go. So that's basic, like, you know, gorilla tech movements. Cause you, so you have your basic, like moving and it, this is all physics based. So I can grab onto things and throw myself up. Um, I can, you know, push apart and like climb up like this. Um, so we could actually make a little bit of a scene if you want really quick. Do y'all have any questions so far? Let's see. Yeah, throw your, uh, throw your questions in there. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to grab Pro Builder from the package manager. So go down to Pro Builder, install that. And then we're just gonna like spec out a really simple scene. And then I'll actually show you how to grab with our physics hands by adding like a collider, we got some time. I'm gonna hang out until the top of the hour. So we got 45 minutes for uh, questions and whatever. Yes, this is gonna be watchable later. Um, and if you want a very condensed version of this video, then I posted on Wednesday, basically the tutorial about how to do the basic grill attack movement. So up until this point, that's where the tutorial goes to. Um, until, you know, and we, we kind of make a little bit of a grill attack um, you know, room or whatever to test all this kind of stuff. But um, that's where the tutorial that I posted on Wednesday, that's like 30 minutes instead of like an hour and a half. Um, you can go back and watch. Also, if you're watching and didn't catch the beginning of the video, um, we are doing a <clears throat> game jam. So itch.io slash jam slash VR jam jam. We're doing a game jam. We got 50 people signed up. It's going to be on the 28th and the until the 30th. So 72 hour game jam. And <clears throat> they 
Like we're just gonna, it's gonna be very casual. I'm actually participating in this one as well. Um, we're gonna announce the theme right when the jam starts, and uh, it's gonna be rated. It's very casual. There's not gonna be well, there might be prizes, but um, there'll be kind of small prizes. It might be like a key to auto hand or something. Um, but there's a link down in the description if you're interested in signing up, coming to hang out. You can read all the rules and whatnot. I like. I want to do more game jams because it allows us to uh, allows me personally to learn better um, when I'm doing a game jam. So, all right, we downloaded Pro Builder. Do you mind explaining how to read the uh, wiki formulas you showed earlier? Um, honestly, I don't even know how to read the wiki. How to read the formulas? So the the uh, so spring is um, k times x or negative k times x. So this one is force times um, force equals the um, so k or I think so x is the distance between like distance from resting. Um, that the spring is so like so yeah so this is x so like if resting is like this then x being pulled so like distance from resting is x and then k is going to be at k is a constant so um, in our formula here in Hooke's law we're doing so this is where the formula is so force is going to be equal displacement from resting so distance um times climb force oh thanks for the uh super chat appreciate you um and so that's the that's the basic hooks lock formula that's the easy one to understand um and then so we're adding in that force and then we're also adding in a little bit of a drag so we don't get like a wobbly um and then the drag is calculated based on how fast we're moving and then and that this is the the super special secret sauce that I got from uh, Donovan, if you haven't checked him out. Which tab are you on? Or Donian? I keep forgetting, I don't know how to pronounce. Um, but he uh, has some videos about climbing and how VR climbing sucks and how to improve VR climbing. Um, so check out these videos if you want a little more info about um, that kind of stuff or like, you know, how, how bone works is almost there but not quite um, kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's Hook's Law. PID controllers, I don't even understand. Like, what the heck? Um, but I do, I understand the basic concept that it is basically, um, so it's using this formula. I don't know how it uses the formula, but it uses this formula to calculate how much force to apply so that we ease into the spot we want without overshooting it. So it, it's like faster out here, and then as you get closer into the target position, it slows down. So it doesn't overshoot. Um, so that's essentially what the formula is trying to accomplish. Um, and you can read about like what each term means and how it kind of works in a little bit. But it uses um, calculus. so a little bit complex math to figure out that kind of stuff. Um, and you can like scroll down here and it shows you in yeah, one of these charts. So the constant value, if you change the, um, I think what, what we labeled as the uh, um, damping force. So it, it'll kind of show you what effect um, moving the damping force up and down will give you. Are we having the procedural hands animation tutorial soon? Um, yes. So <laughs> that's a bit like, so I did that anime. I did that tutorial like a long time ago. And that is like my most requested tutorial is how to do the procedural grip on an object after like you know, at doing a physics hand. And so since I just updated essentially what is the physics hand tutorial, um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably try to do that here pretty soon because it's, uh, and I've been learning more about unity and code and like the more complex, like stuff, like the, you know, the procedural type animations. So, um, I think in the next, give me a month or two to <laughs> do a little research. Um, maybe a month. I'll make it a higher priority because that really has been my most um, requested video. And I think it would do pretty good with the YouTube algorithm because everyone's searching how to do procedural type stuff. So um, thanks. I appreciate you. 
Um, I am planning on being a lot more active if you haven't noticed. Um, in January, I have posted more videos and live streams than I did uh, in a while. So I'm trying to do every week to do a tutorial or some kind of video. And then on the weekends, do a live stream, hang out with you guys, answer some specific questions. And in the future, we'll start doing some gaming um, stuff and whatnot. Did I miss any other comments? Overlay blend mode. Oh, yeah. I do not have any hints on the theme. I, I don't even know what ideas. Um, we I'm going to do a poll in the Discord. It's going to be like a private poll. I need to figure out how to do that. Um, where you you get to vote for what I may it may even just be like a Google like form or something where you vote on what your theme what the theme should be, and then we will see what gets the most votes. And I'm not gonna peek. And I'm not going to show, you know, who's winning or whatnot until the day of the um, day of the jam. And then I'll be participating and then in live streaming most of it. Um, and then I may like, you know, live stream for a couple hours, um, break it up into sections. So like planning live stream and then like a dev live stream and then like a game design live stream and then... Um, you know, coding and whatnot. So if you're not too into the coding, you can make sure to show up for the correct live stream. Um, so, oh yeah, so I was downloading Pro Builder and um, adding in a little cool scene. So let's open a Pro Builder window, drop in a new shape here, and then let's add in cube shape. And then I'm just gonna like basically drag out um, here. Okay. Oh goodness. There we go. Make a wall. A walls. A little uh, arena type thing. And while I'm building this, this will be the boring part of the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions or want me to clarify something or talk about something totally different if you want. Right all the walls in there and then let's make uh, some interesting structures so like a little shelf here and then uh, we'll, we'll make a little like tree type thing that we can climb up and then we'll do like a wall here oh I did that wrong The wall over here so we can do like the the bounce climbing back and forth like the um like a well you're climbing up a well um and then let's have just like a little box in here to jump over and then uh one more thing one thing up here at the top cool just like a little uh, arena thing to play around with and all of these have, if we jump over the inspector, they all have mesh colliders on them. So we will collide with them and not fall through, which is perfect. Can you send the Unity project easily to us? I'd like to try to make my own map. Um, well, the original is down in the description um, on GitHub. And if you want access to any of my scripts, then um, if you support me on Patreon, um, you have access to all of the scripts from every single tutorial. And I think it's like three bucks a month. And you can just like, you know, one month, download all of the scripts and then cancel it. Totally up to you. Um, I'm not like trying to paywall anyone. Like I show you how to do all of the scripts um, on all of my videos, but I'm trying to make a living out of this too. So um, it helps me if you uh, if you support and I, I really appreciate it. But if you don't want to pay, then all of the code is all visually there. You just have to kind of type it in yourself. And I know it works because I just did it. So, you if you if it's not working for you, you must be you must have missed something. All right, let's uh, let's jump into this one and kind of play around with it a little bit, and then I'll show you uh, a cool thing that I like to add. Um, all right, so oh, I started in the box. So there we go. Oh, there we go. I'm out of the box. I need to adjust my controller a little bit. All right. So we've got. 
a little room here and I can kind of just bounce around and just push off the ground. And then it's a little bouncy, but um, push up, there we go. Push over to this one, oh, I missed it. Uh, let's see if we can like use both of our hands to climb up this guy. Also, I could turn the lasers off. Um, so we can kind of throw ourselves up here. I'm getting better at this. I've never actually played Gorilla Tag, if you uh, believe me or not. Um, let's jump over to this little wall area. And then if I can like kind of bounce off both. Boing, 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 boing. Oh no, there we go. Oh, it's, it's bouncy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm not too good at climbing, but it works. And the, the 500, I think, feels a little better than the 1,000 that I used to have it at. Um, so you can bounce up to that. Oh, I missed. And you can also up the friction a little bit, too, if like it's a little too slippery for you. And, I, and, the, and the reason someone asked earlier why I did um, the flat cubes instead of doing like a sphere is because you can kind of grab like the edges a little bit better with the cubes. So like I can push on the edge here or push on this edge and it like, you know, gives me a little bit better, um, you know, control. Um, but yeah, that's fun. So let's do, uh, so what if you wanted to kind of use this for a, uh, like a space game, like a zero G, um, game? How would you go about doing that? And you could actually convert that over really easily. Um, like you can convert this over really easily and really all you have to do is say okay when I grab something so right now the code as it is is if I grab something like if I press any of the buttons or something nothing works the mass of the hands is 20 but the body doesn't have any mass on it right now so the left and right hand controllers nope not the controllers the physics hands have a mass of 20 um, but the body is just a one so it's easy to kind of launch yourself right now. Pinch climbing, yeah. I don't know, I've never played Gorilla Tag. Do you recommend this formula over the last physical hands formula? Yes. This one, the PID like specific controllers are much better than um, I kind of hack hacked and slashed the last one. Like, so it worked, but like um, it, it's a little laggy. Um, recommend going with this more physics oriented approach. So let's add in um, when you press the grip button, you grab something. First, I'm going to turn the line renderers off so you don't see the lines because we don't need them and then we want to be able to grab an object and you know clamp onto it and hold hold on to it so let's jump back into the code i'm gonna collapse all of these scripts here so right now we're doing movement rotation and then hooks a lot of push off of things but we want to subscribe to a event that says okay when we press the grip button if we're colliding with something and that something is a rigid body or climbable or something then we'll grab onto it um, so we want to do a void on grab and then this is going to be a callback context etx so basically when we press the grip button we're going to subscribe to this um, <laughs> yes, you can absolutely support for a month and then download all of the stuff and then stop supporting if you want. That's totally fine with me. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. That's that's the way the system works. And if you want to get around the system, that's totally fine. All it means is you just won't have access to the previous there the future like tutorials and stuff. But, you know, if three months down the line, you're like, oh, that's a cool tutorial. And I like, you know, I can subscribe now and for a month and download all the stuff again. So yeah, whatever. If you want to hack the system review, go for it. I don't care. Uh, 
Oh yeah, the what if to like extend the uh... See, and that's how I get you. You probably stay. <laughs> so like, yeah, do it for once for one month. And then that's the, the that's like a marketing trick. If you um if you do it for one month, like it's a oh, I forgot what it's called. It's like the um if you go to the shelter and they're like, oh, we'll just take the puppy home, just try it out. Um, and if you don't like it in a week, then you can totally bring the puppy back and it's fine. Nobody ever brings the puppy back. It's because they try it out and they like it. And like your return is like a very, very low percentage. So it's a marketing trick. I'll let you know. I am using a marketing trick on you. Um, but now you know. <laughs> All right, so on grab, when we press the grip button, we want to do something. And we essentially just want to attach a joint um, to whatever we grabbed. So we're gonna grab, we're gonna take the, uh, so on grab, we, but we need to know what we're colliding with. So on collision enter, we're going to just basically save that collision. So collision is gonna be equal to collision. And then on collision exit, we're going to just remove the collision. So collision, be equal to no and then i'm going to press alt enter and create field collision up here at the top so just a private collision field using hotkeys to kind of speed things up a little bit oh they're really that's how that's how you did it and you got a dog for the few months tried her out oh you don't own her it's been a few months wow i'm impressed you have a quite a resolve <laughs> see i built a game at the moment, but after the movement video, I want to build a second one with the movement, but you feel like you wouldn't enjoy it yourself because you can't, oh, you, you got to get used to like the motion sickness metro, meadow, meadow R6. Yeah, the Unity like motion sickness stuff is something you just kind of get used to. Um, I've heard, I haven't played it, but I've heard Vader Immortal is actually a really good game to play to get used to motion sickness because you are moving for a little bit, but then you stop and you kind of like, you know, do all the fighting and stuff in one area and then you move a little bit more. Um, so it's kind of like, uh, you're not continuously moving. So it helps you kind of get your feet again when you sit there and like fight for a little bit. Um, <laughs> gorilla tag movement is quite insane. Um, so the, this is on the high end of uh, motion sickness. Uh, there's another game that's like, uh, came out a few, like middle of last year or something. Um, but it's like, uh, swing shooter so like you're, you're like doing grappling hooks and swinging around and shooting stuff that one i would say is pretty high on the uh motion sickness scale too all right so we, we're saving a collision every time we touch something because we might grab it and if we grab it then we want to basically take the thing that we're colliding with um sort of say if collision doesn't equal null and then we're also going to check for a rigid body so if collision doesn't equal no and um, collision dot try get component or collision dot game object dot try get component um, and we'll try to get a rigid body or actually try get component and then we'll do out rigid body RB we'll do RB your body is a saved word so we use rb instead and then so basically if we are colliding something and that something has a rigid body then we can do something um and so we basically are just going to attach a um fixed joint to that object so we're gonna um do a uh what's the what's the word for it i've got a joint so it'll be your body dot add component fix joints there we go and then this will be a we need to save that variable to so fix joint joint it's going to be equal to we're going to add a fixed joint to the rigid body and then we're going to say joint dot um connected body gonna be equal to rigid body or 
let's do it the other way around. Let's connect the or connect the joint to the hands rigid body, and then we're going to attach the rigid body of. So basically, we're we're I'm changing the game object that the component is added to. So we're adding a rigid body. We're adding a fixed joint component to our hands when we grab. So we're gonna check and see if. It has a rigid body on it, and if it does, then we're going to basically attach ourselves to the rigid body. And then we need basically a ungrab or a on release method. So void on release. That's going to be an input action or callback context as well. X. And then here, all we need to do is see if we have a um, fixed joint. So try to get component. Joint joint equals try get component um, fix. Oh, uh, doo -doo. fix joint try get component fix. I'm I'm doing this terribly wrong. All right, joint is going to be equal to get component. Fix there we go. And then we're going to say if joint doesn't equal null. Because we might press the release button, like just, you know, in midair, press grab and release. Um, so we need to account for not actually grabbing anything. Um, then we are going to remove. Uh, do joint. Yeah, destroy joint. Destroy joint. This code I don't have written down ahead of time, so I'm coming up with it. So you're, you're actually watching me live, um, live code. I, I went through it once before just to make sure it worked, but um, I don't. I'm not copying and pasting for uh, this one. I don't have a reference, <laughs> so bear with me if I'm like, "Oh, what was that word again?" Because you know, this is just how I code. <laughs> All right. So when we grab something, if we're touching something, and the something we're touching has a rigid body which we're gonna have to go back and add a rigid body to all the, uh, just a kinematic rigid body to all the objects in the scene that we wanna be able to grab off of. Then we're going to basically just add a fixed joint and connect our hand to that object in that spot. And then if we release, so if we release the grip button, we're gonna call this method and it's just basically gonna find the fixed joint and destroy it. So let's subscribe. So at the start method, we want to, um, make a let's do another space and then a header or um, this one's going to be grabbing stuff and then we're going to have a serialized field and then this one's going to be an input action reference oh not type reference um, and then this is going to be grab grab reference This is how we're going to use the uh, the new input system. No, don't reorganize things for me. This is how we're going to we're using the new input system to grab. Um, and so this is how you use the new input system: is you um, have a reference, or one of the ways you can use the new input system. So we're doing it via code. We're going to have a reference to whatever action happens, and then in the start method, we're going to subscribe to that reference. If it's performed, if it's started, if it's canceled, and then we can run a method every time that action happens. So grab reference uh, action dot, um, and then we want started. So when you start pressing the grip button, then we want to subscribe. So subscribe by doing plus equals, and then we'll do on grab. And then same thing for release. So grab reference action, and then canceled is the. Uh, so if you see the lightning bolt, that's a event you can subscribe to. So we could subscribe to canceled. Um, and then there's also a performed and then started. So we want canceled. So when you release plus equals on grab. And then anytime you subscribe to something, you want to unsubscribe from it. So you want on destroy. And then I'm just going to copy and paste both of these. So just in case our hand is destroyed for some reason, um, we're going to unsubscribe from everything.
Spencer, thanks for the sub. <laughs> Everybody's just calling you out right now, so I will also. All right. I think we have everything set up. There's one little like tweak we can make that I'll come back to in a second. Basically, when we grab something, oh, we don't want to subscribe to on grab twice. We're going to subscribe to on release. I missed that one. You guys didn't even tell me. Rude. Just be helping me here. Come on. No, no, don't unsubscribe, Spencer. I'm not unsubscribing to you. We're unsubscribing to release. <laughs> uh, what version do you want to uh, get for this? I would recommend the, um, hey, Mr. No One, um, the uh, version I would recommend is the latest that's not in beta. So we can actually look at Unity Hub here. Um, I'm using 2021.2.7 for this tutorial. Um, you can install, there is a uh, more recent one, so 2021.2.8, which I'll actually install after this video is over. Um, so I'd recommend the latest version that's not a pre-release. So you could download 2022 right now if you wanted to, but um, this is like pre-release, so there's, it's still in beta, they're still working on it. Um, the If it has an F in it, that means it's a final version, so they're not gonna change it, I guess. Um, I mean, they'll change it, they'll make updates to it. Um, but as long as you're like, you're, you're, and if you're learning, I recommend using the latest version. Um, but if you're making a game, I recommend using the latest L LTS version. So long-term support, which essentially means, so I have basically each long-term support downloaded from the last two years. So long-term support means they will, um, not make any changes or major updates for two years. So they'll, they'll support it for two years. Um, can you show me how to get the PID code converted to Unity? I don't know what that means. How do you, what do you mean converted to Unity? You just write it in C sharp and then you can add, you can attach that C sharp script to an object. Here, I'll show you. So over in, um, our Unity project, we have our left hand and right hand. And so all the code we wrote goes right here. So we just add it as if it's another component. So you just add component and then physics hand and then there it is that's the code that's how you attach it to a unity game object thanks mr no one i appreciate you oh yeah landon you might want to go back and uh watch from earlier if you're just joining <laughs> i'm like doing some advanced stuff that's like extra added on to the tutorial at this point we'll probably hang out for 15 more minutes but i want to show you this so this is how you use um, this is, would be how you convert either like uh, just general climbing. So instead of using friction and having to pinch climb and stuff, you can just grab the wall and move up. Um, but you could also just turn gravity off and use this for like a space zero G kind of movement where you push off of walls and stuff. Um, so we're going we're gonna to attempt that. I have not tried it in zero G yet, but I have tried the climbing part of stuff. So we have, we're subscribing and unsubscribing from um, on release break things up a little bit more um so we've got on release on grab that we need to set the references um and let, so let's try this out see if it works um so our grab reference is just going to be this select button um on the left hand and then on the right hand we're going to set our grab reference to be oh can you guys see that yeah it's going to be the select for the right hand And then save and hopefully this works. There's one tweak we can make that actually, um, yeah, I'm basically making echo VR right now. You are correct. <laughs> oh crap. I need to change my starting position because I always spawn inside the cube. Hold on. Let's move me up. So I am not, not that far. Starting on top of the cube, and then the, uh, the physics stuff can be above too. There we go. That way I'm not like starting stuck every time. Okay. 
So we can, you know, do the do our normal stuff. But oh wait, I didn't add rigid bodies to everything. That's why I'm not grabbing. I was like, why isn't it working? Oh no! Um, I'm going to select all of these. So I'm going to click the top one, hold down shift, click the bottom one, and then this cube also. And then I'm going to add a component, rigid body. Oh, cube already has a rigid body. Add component, rigid body. And then I'm just going to make all of these is kinematic and uncheck use gravity. And then they don't need like hyper collision detection because they're staying still. So as long as the fast moving thing has um, continuous dynamic, which our hands do. So that is all you need. Um, so yeah, that's a, it's important for this. You have to have a rigid body on things in order to grab them. Um, but you can set them to kinematic and then you don't have to worry. So now I can grab and move around and you'll see our, um, our dampening that we added is working. So I can grab the side now, grab, and then push off and nothing works. And our dampening works, so like the slower we move, you'll see it's a very tight kind of movement. But the, if we move fast, you'll see that bounce a little bit. So that's the drag scaling up and down. Um, and that's that's what I got from Donovan, or Don, Donian. Um, his link, the link to his channel is down in the description. He was very helpful for helping me figure out that um, part. So um, the faster we move, like the faster it throws us and the less drag there is, but the more unstable it is. And you can grab with both hands too. It kind of, it'll kind of calculate out between both of them. And so now I can just kind of like throw myself without like <laughs> trying to like throw myself without touching the, uh, like slamming my face into the, computer um so there is one issue though is if i so you see i tried to grab there and it didn't um grab oh let's turn gravity off and see if that works first um so if i turn gravity off and this works um then we have echo vr except minus the uh jets and stuff which you'd probably have to add or else you just kind of get stuck floating off in the middle without being able to touch anything um so if we go to edit project settings physics and then gravity is zero. See if this works. And since it's all physics, we should be able to uh, still, everything should still work. Except now I can push myself off. There we go. I'm like floating around and I can grab the wall and push myself off in this direction. There we go. We made Echo VR. And you can go faster too. I'm just going slow because I don't want to fly off into the distance. And you can like bounce off of stuff too, so I can just push. Um, but then I don't have jets, so <laughs> we're just gonna fly off into infinity. Um, so if you're doing something like that, I would add jets or um, a grappling hook or something, something so you can get back into like touching something without having to. Um, just float, like wait for an hour for you to float to another wall or something. Um, so jets are like a grappling hook for that, but here we go, Echo VR. <laughs> and all we did was add grabbing and um, turn gravity off. Um, but there is one thing, um, <laughs> Justin was never seen again, <laughs> lost in space. Yep, that, that would be like my worst fear. That would be terrifying. Slowly drifting in space. That would be an interesting experience if someone made a space game and that was just part of it. Like, it like you you just turned gripping off and you just slowly like floated away and like that was the ending. That'd be kind of wild. All right, there's there's one thing that I want to kind of fix though is like when I this on grab only happens when um the the problem with it is it. It only happens instantly when you press the grip button. So if you are off by like a couple frames, and so if you grab right before you touch the wall, then you're not gonna grab onto the wall. And so it's like a, if you've ever heard of the the, the coyote time, you know, if a coyote and Roadrunner where he was running and then would go off of the uh, 
cliff, but then he would like run for a few more seconds before falling. Like that's coyote time and game developers, especially for platform games, will add that to games to kind of like give the player like, hey, you weren't technically on the um, cliff anymore, but you were like, you know, you were pretty close. So we'll let you, uh, we'll let you jump anyway. So I, I kind of want to add coyote time to trying to grab the wall. Um, so basically you, you grab and it'll give you a second or two to like grab onto the wall. So instead of doing like instantly grabbing, if there's a, uh, collision or whatever, we are going to call a, um, coroutine. Wow. Blanked on that name. Um, so we're going to start a coroutine. Um, and then we're going to say, um, try grab. And then I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna cut this section here, and then swap this over to an I enumerable, I enumerator, try grab, and paste all that in here. But instead of every, um, you know, just doing this once, we're gonna put it into a uh, while statement. So while um, is grabbing is equal to true, then we are going to do this, like run, run this statement here. And then right before here, we're going to say um, is grabbing is going to be equal to true. And then on release, we're going to set is grabbing into false. I'll go, I'll go over this really quick in a second. Um, just um, if you're lost. So, and then I'm going to go up here to the top and add grabbing as a bool. So right next to is colliding. Is grabbing. What we're doing here is we are on grab, instead of just automatically trying to attach to whatever we grabbed, um, we want to go ahead and start to try to grab things. Um, and then basically while we're holding down the grip button, it's going to be constantly trying to grab onto something. Instead of just trying it once, it's going to be trying to grab onto it until we are attached to something. And then once we attach to something, then that'll be set. Um, and we also need to check and see if there is a um, so we're checking for a collision, but we also need to check to see if we already have a fixed joint on here because we don't want to keep adding fixed joints. Um, so we're going to check to see if we are colliding with something. Um, and then we'll just set is grabbing equal to false if we get to this point. There we go. So. If we successfully grab onto something, is grabbing is equal to false, which um, we'll, we'll say, we'll change it from an is grabbing to is attempting grab. Is attempting grab. So, so what I did for this was I just press control R, press control and then R twice. And it'll bring up my um, renaming icon thing. If you're using Visual Studio, it'll just highlight the variable, and then you can type, retype in whatever you want to rename it to. Um, and then in Writer, it brings up a little dialog box. Um, and it's important to make sure your variables are named for what they're doing and not, you know, so is grabbing. If I kept it named to is grabbing, it would not be a good, um, you know, variable because we're not, like, <laughs> we're still grabbing onto something, but we're setting it to false. So I've changed it to is attempting grab so while we're trying to attempt to grab we are um, going to be inside of here trying to grab onto something but if we're not attempting to grab then we're setting it to false basically so does that all make sense let me know if there's if that was a little confusing i feel like that in my head that was a little confusing i want to read chat for a sec um, if you missed the bulk of it, you can just rewind. Also, I'm going to post this um, to be watched later as well. It's going to be under my um, live streams with Justin playlist. Um, <laughs> yes, we basically did just make Echo VR. Um, yeah, the recording's going to be available. The space game. 
but the very first grab you miss, you float off into space, and then it's actually a horror simulator. <laughs> Absolutely. That's 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 what we made. <laughs> a good looking spaceship fighting game. Didn't know the trick about eye enumerator. Um yeah, so eye enumerator is just a co-routine. So um oh, and one thing I missed in here is we need a yield return null. So coroutine, what it does is um, allows you to come back to this code every frame. So um, yield return null basically just says, okay, try all, do all of this stuff. And then when we hit this statement, go out and do the rest of the stuff that you're gonna do for the frame. But the next frame, come back and start again right here. And then we'll jump back into the while loop again. Um, so that's kind of how this works. It's called a coroutine and it's very helpful for like doing things over a period of time. I should play it, yes. Um, PID, movement and rotation needs a return type. No, it doesn't. Um, make sure it's set to void. So void, PID, movement, void, PID, rotation. All right, cool, cool. We're all good. We're, all right, let's, let's test this and see how it works. Basically, all we did was add in a um, coyote time who are grabbing so that when we try to grab, if we gr attempt to grab a little, like a, a few seconds above or a few seconds before we, you know, grab onto something, then we'll still catch it. All right, so let's grab onto this and then push off. And then before we get to this wall, I'm gonna grab. So I'm gonna press the grip button now. And then there we go, we stuck to it. So that's exactly what we wanted. So now I can, you know, grab, accidentally grab a little bit beforehand and I still am able to latch onto something. So I can grab now and then stick to it. It's like you just have a sticky hand. You just click and now you're stuck to it. And then when you let go, it still works. So I can click and release and it doesn't work. But if I grab and keep grabbing, it'll stick, which is exactly what we want. All right, we're about out of time. There is one more thing I want to add to um, to it, just so if you're kind of following along with me, um, that'll kind of help improve your game a little bit more. Um, how long does that coroutine last? It lasts until I release. <laughs> so since it's a while loop, um, this is going to go every single frame unless I, while is attempted grab is false. So you have to make sure that is attempted grab gets set to false at some point. Um, and you could just have a timeout in here too, as well. So if you, um, you know, if you want true coyote time, it'll time out after a half second or something. Um, you can add in a timeout in here as well. How long did this take? We've been in the live stream for two hours. Um, and I appreciate all of you who've hung out. We've actually gone way up. We've got uh, 45 people watching now. That's really cool. It's going to be posted later if you, uh, miss the beginning of it or um whatnot um doo -doo -doo. isn't it easier to have a tag on the colliding object yes you could um instead of checking for a rigid body and um whatnot you could just instead of doing this which is a little more computationally intense you could swap this out for if it has a tag on it um and then you have to just make sure that if it has a tag on it it is um also gonna have a rigid body on it. That would save you a little processing power. Um, but one more thing I wanted to add is a distance check. So if you are, um, here, I'll, I'll show you what the, uh, or, so it's like, so if I grab above like an object or something and then throw myself, but my hand kind of gets stuck to the object and sucked up and now it's really far away. I want my hand to say, okay, well, if it's, you know, more than a meter away from me, I want it to just teleport back to um, my hand. So that's the last thing we're gonna add, and then we will um, kind of end. I'll, I'll kind of demo the issue though. So if we hit play, wait for it to spin up, there we go. Okay, so if I grab, um, so if I grab the top of here, but then like, so my hand's on top there, and if I push down, Since we're using zero G, it, um, let me turn gravity back on. <laughs> Edit. 
Project settings, physics, negative 9.81. Right, gravity's back on. This this, uh, this issue happens when there's, um yeah, it's like slices of cheese for my hand. That was the idea, guys. Okay, there we go. So if I'm grabbing onto this, and so I put my hand above, and then I just let go. Oh. Oh, so maybe, maybe we're good. Oh, there, there was an issue. Oh, it was, it may not be as much of an issue, but it's just kind of like a, a safety thing, just to, you know, just in case you get too far away. Um, we want to do a uh, distance check. So I'm just going to create a new method called enter, create method. It's going to be a void method. And um, we want basically just to say if the, uh, Vector three dot distance um, between the target position and the transform position is greater than like something like we'll just say um, distance. Also, we want this to be an absolute value. So um, math dot abs. The absolute value of the distance between these two um, things is greater than distance, then we just want to um, basically teleport the physics hand back to our original position. So we're going to do um, transform.position is going to be equal to target.position and transform.rotation is equal to target.rotation. And then we'll set up this distance variable up here. Um, Realize field loops and we'll set that equal to what do you like 0.5 or something so if we are more than half a meter away from our physics hand the physics hand is just going to teleport to us um, so just in case you get stuck somewhere your hand gets stuck somewhere um, if you like grab, you might, you won't get like teleported back to where your other hand is. Um, so it's, it's just kind of like a safety kind of thing. Um, but yeah, just a little distance check here. And now your, your hand should teleport back. Um, see if there's a, I'll try to demo it on this cube in here. So if I put my hand back here, and then slide, there we go, see it teleported. So I was a little further away and it just, oh, it teleported my other hand. Cause it's like, uh, it, was, it was one or the other, but uh, yeah, it basically just kind of resets you if you get stuck. Um, but that's about it. Um, some of this, um, I'll mention um, Donian's channel again. Some of this I made with the help of uh, Donian's videos. So if you, check him out see how many subscribers he's gotten since we started hanging out a couple um he made a vr hands and climbing video that mentions some of the code i used in here and vr climbing sucks um which is some of the concepts that i use so check his channel out and subscribe to him um because uh, he helps me figure out some of the drag stuff and whatnot via his videos um and join the game jam if you have not already sign up for it we have 50 people signed up. It's going to be at the uh, the last weekend of January. I'm going to be participating in it. So if you can't join or whatever, you can pop in some of these live streams. I'm going to live stream a good bit of it. And then, um, yeah, it'll be fun. Thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for showing up. The uh, If you want to watch a tutorial about how to do this kind of stuff, it'll be the shorter one I post on Wednesday. And then this will be live for you or uh, able ability able for you guys to uh, see um, it'll be up there so appreciate each and every one of you for coming out thanks for hanging out and i will um see you next week let me know add a comment below this um video after it is off live of what you want to uh see next what tutorials and whatnot